Welcome. Yeah, I think the microphone might be easier. I don't know. It's on. No? I don't know. Well, the light's on, so I assume it's on. Okay. It's more to capture the radio, uh, to capture for <coughs> than to amplify in the room. Yes. Yeah. I assume you all got my uh, letter to the editor and... I did. Okay. About an hour and a half ago. I don't know if everybody did. I think mm -hmm. all did. Okay, good. Hope you didn't feel bullied. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> the purpose was not to be critical, but to en to encourage an expanded discussion on the topic at hand. Um, I suppose I should read some of this, but I don't want to discourage people from buying Hampton Union. <laughs> <coughs> At the uh, school board's urging, the voters approved a $26 million renovation project for Hampton Academy in March of this year with promises of doing everything possible to keep the actual project costs down. Reports that I've received from the actual construction site indicate so far that promise is being kept, and I commend you for that. Even to the extent of preserving bricks, etc., from the demolition purpose of raising money from these now idle assets by selling them. Pardon my voice, I always get this in the fall. <clears throat> While selling these idle assets may raise a few hundred dollars, it is concerning that there is another asset made idle as a result of the renovation that may not be considered for sale that would raise dollars in the millions. And that's why I'm here, to encourage you to consider that. The Kiwanis Club donated some years ago a 32.8 acre parcel of prime property on Tall Farm Road to the Hampton Schools. This includes a minimum of 15 buildable acres. This donation was presumably based on the expectation that SAU 90 would use this asset for educational purposes. I say that because the Kiwanis Club is, according to their website, all about, quote, serving the children. And of course, we all know that SAU 90's sole purpose for existing is to provide for Hampton's educational needs. This land has long been thought to be a location for a new school building. But recent decisions by the school board to renovate existing buildings to achieve the needed school facilities has rendered this land a surplus. <clears throat> Holding on to the surplus asset causes ongoing maintenance and continued exposure to liability without substantially serving Hampton's children. This land, if sold on the open market, would generate a minimum of one and a half million dollars and as much as two and a half million dollars, according to estimates that I received after long discussions with the town assessor. This money should be returned to the taxpayers to help reduce the burden of the $26 million renovation project. It should not be given away or sold at bargain basement price, nor should it be retained for reasons not substantially related to the core mission of the school. Recent discussions to do so appear far removed from the school's core mission, thus serving to undermine the integrity of the promise to the voters and raise questions in the minds of future donors as to whether their donation will truly be used as intended this land should be sold on the open market for the best price. The money received should then be used for the highest and best purpose, which is to keep more fully the promise made to the voters last March. That is the essence with some variation to my letter to the editor. And uh, I have more to say, uh, but I'd rather just have an opportunity for you guys to ask questions than throw dots at me, if you wish. Uh, I, for one, uh, I understand pretty much both sides of the argument. Um, we would have to rely on Mr. Lunny as to how any sort of money would make any sort of impact on a tax bill. You want to talk about that? Sure. I, I guess I could tell you that if, uh, if if we're talking about a sale of the property, then obviously the if if the property were to be sold, the proceeds. Um, in the absence of any preparation or any other planning, like trust funds or places to put it, the dollars would be received as a 
potentially either anticipated or unanticipated revenue, which would go back to the benefit of taxpayers and would, for that period, for that tax bill or that season, you'd see a, a, a decrease. I didn't, I didn't bring my notes, but I, you know, I could grab a calculator and tell you what a million or two million would be on a tax rate uh, in terms of your mail rate for, for that bill. Uh, there are there are other alternatives. If there was some foresight, you could set up a, a, a different structure, a different vehicle, like a like an expendable trust fund or a capital reserve account, and you could ask that the proceeds from the sale be deposited there for whatever the purpose was that you established uh, that for. That again, when I say foresight, that can only be created by action of the school district uh, annual meeting on the, on the on the warrant. So you'd have to build that into your warrant cycle. Um, but that's the. Well, that's essentially how the sale of that land um, could affect the taxpayers. It could do so all at once, or it could do so with um, an incremental release or impact uh, or an offsetting of other costs, however you want to. If I might ask, uh, is the bond structured in such a way that we can apply it directly to the principal on the bond? Uh, Incrementally, you could take it against your debt service, but the bonds, the multiple bonds were sold in the open market. That's they've fixed. got maturities and they're fixed. Okay. There might be an opportunity after 10 years, but only with con in concert with long the bond time. bank. It's yeah. a long time out. So, okay. yeah, I can't, there's no, there isn't an early payment opportunity. But, but again, you can take it all as a big hit against the tax rate in, the, in one year, in one period, or you could dole it out and say, let's use, uh, you know, a tenth of it for each year over 10 years or any, any number of things if you set it up. Any other board members have any questions for Mr. Jones? If it would apply, you know, a million and a half dollars to our, all of us in Hampton, that how much would each household get at a, like an average three hundred thousand dollar home? What would be our break? So the a million and a half, a million and a half dollars on the tax rate. Mm -hmm. For everybody's about, I, I didn't bring my tax base with me, but it's 3.3 billion and uh, et cetera, 3.37 something. That's 44 cents. Okay. Yeah. So on a $300,000 house would be. So on a 300, yep, on a 300,000 dollar house, 133 bucks. Yeah. One time. Yeah. Uh, that would be. Yeah, that would be yeah. that. Which means that the next 24 years would be at. Regular rate. Yeah, that would. Right. Any other questions yeah. from Mr. Jones? Just curious. Thank you. If we I don't, just, we don't just, take it lightly at all. I appreciate that. If I could just close by pointing sure. out that uh, uh, other discussions that I've heard uh, talk about uh, giving it to the town, the conservation commission, et cetera, et cetera. And I think that the school board. And the entire town is actually best served when the school board focuses on education and not getting involved in what the town should or shouldn't do. Uh, and so I would discourage uh, uh, the school board from getting involved in that area. I think the school board should focus on is this land truly surplus? And I think you previously have more or less established that to be the case. And then how best to dispose of it because that is the only way really to serve promise that was made last March when bond was passed. And I think any any attempts to use that land for educational purposes would be nominal at best. It wouldn't be substantial to your your, your main mission. So I would encourage you to to, uh, to consider the land surplus and simply move to find a way to liquidate it. How you disperse the funds is, is, a sec is, is a question for the next step. It's not something to be decided or considered at this moment in my mind. So. Thank you. Thank you. It at this time, uh, because I, I was going to read it into the minutes, because we received, I received an, uh, another letter from uh, Mrs. Wolsey, and I know you're here, Mary Louise, but I'm going to read it in because we have to. Uh, at this point in time, you have two considerations. Sell the land outright and see whether the value is sufficient to offset your operating budgets for a year, several years. Uh, can't read the next word, uh, or more for development. 
Number two, decide as citizens, taxpayers, residents of the community, founded in 1638, whether you are committed to the quick buck, uh, historical value by voting to conserve the beautiful parcel for the enjoyment of future generations, nature in its undisturbed state. Will future generations appreciate the quick fix for a few dollars with another monstrous development resulting, or will you carry over the land for all to enjoy in perpetuity. History will judge your decision. Um, only you have the responsibility to make an historic decision. History will be your judge. Thank you for listening. Mary Louise Woolsey. Who's getting cut off on the end. Um, so I wanted to read that into the minutes anyway. Um, we do not have this item on our agenda tonight, but something tells me it's going to be on our next agenda. Um, and we will be uh, having some time to th think about the possibilities. Oh, it is on the agenda tonight. Yeah. Okay. Well, then let's move down to it. Toll found property. It is on the agenda. I missed it. Discussion? Do you have to vote on this once? Well, we voted, <laughs> as it were, to kind of kick the can down the road. Okay. That was, I believe, in September. Um, you, you would need some type of motion to reconsider a vote that you already took. So, but yes, you did. Um, you all voted 5050 to, um, to leave the land and the conditions around it where it is right now. But if I recall that meeting, uh, we all, we, the reason we kicked the can yeah. down the road was we wanted to get additional information, and I, th I think Nate was supposed to put stuff together for a future meeting on, uh, first of all, the legalities was one of the issues. Secondly, we were going to explore all the options, and then I think we were going to also look at maybe forming a committee and then getting feedback from the community as well. Personally, I'd like to see feedback from the entire community. I think this is in your opinion, the use of this land, I think you used the words nominal in regard to education of students. I personally don't believe that, but I really believe that, this, that the community needs to have input into making this decision with us. And so I would personally like to see this on a vote to the community how they feel about it. Again, personally, I feel like this land should stay where, as it is, as a resource for not only our students, but a resource for the community. Um, we're building up all over town, and that's awesome. It's great it's bringing in more kids, and we're happy as happy as can be. But um, I, I personally would like to see this go out to the community of voters and see how they feel about it before a final decision is made by the board. I don't feel I have enough information. I, I would, I'd like to see some more solid figures, etc. Do we have to sell all of that property to get that solid figure? Could some of it still remain, um, but I don't know that. I would doubt that we could be doing anything that, uh, for this year. Time-wise, in terms of in terms of putting your your warrant together, I mean you could you could push, but you when we had the conversation last and in the conversations we've had since, we want to collect. You know, there's other information that could be collected. We talked about having separate separate session uh, to talk about it. So that might be a lot. You know, before you push, we're finishing the budget, we're pushing that out to the budget committee. Uh, you know, your warrant is due now. I mean, in the next month, you want to put that together. So. If there are warrant articles that you want to consider, we would need to move quickly to, 
you know, to, to take a swing at that. Certainly, it's certainly doable, but that needs to be a new focus if we want to, you know, of attention if we want to get that for the March vote. Right. I just think we need more input. I, th I thought that's what we discussed in the September meeting. We were going to put it all together, and then we were going to have a future meeting, and then also we were going to look for input from the general public because it basically belongs to the community and for Everybody their use. has a stake in this. It's not just us. Yeah. I mean, the Boy Scouts are utilizing the property, am I right? They're mm -hmm. working there. Right. Mm -hmm. Just a comment about the use of the property right now. I mean, it's a busy place. I mean, the kids the kids are over there during the, during the weekends. I was over there on a Sunday. We were doing something in town, and uh, they were out there with boats racing on the pond and with mom and dad. There are seniors there. When we stop by, there are often seniors there that have breakfast or lunch or coffee, and they sit on the picnic benches, as you know. The uh, Eagle Scouts uh, have done a lot of work over there, created a bridge over the wetland, as well as put in some um, benches and picnic tables for folks. Um, the district, as you know, has spent some resources, not a tremendous amount, but we have spent resources to keep the property um, in good stead so that people can enjoy it, uh, including the ducks that our visitors uh, in the spring and in the fall, sometimes too many of them. But um, so you do do you do use that as a resource, as well as folks who just use the property for walking and in walking in the woods, and that's possible now because we have a pretty safe bridge built. So it is it is used quite a bit, and I, my my biggest concern will be that the 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 bachelor pond. We have the questions about the land. We did a legal. The, our your legal. Um, attorney uh, took a look at it, reviewed all of the deeds, reviewed the plans, the tax, tax maps. We did all of that. Um, and the warrant articles that were back in the 70s that gave you that property. So we have all of that done. What we didn't, what we don't have yet done is the assessment on the property, which we would need to have a, an assess, a, you know, real estate uh, assessment done on it for value. So we still have a little bit of work to do on that, as you uh, indicated. Kind of bring you up to date on our work. Uh, my suggestion is we uh, we put this on the agenda for the December meeting. Try to have more information. It's hard to make a decision without. I mean, we had one presentation uh, from the Conservation Commission, mm -hmm. and. We don't know the value, etc. Frank. Yeah, uh, I'm just going to put my input in this. Uh, basically, I think <laughs> instead of looking at the December meeting, we should probably look at the January meeting only because we've got Nate and the superintendent where we're trying to get this budget together, finalized, move forward. That's got to be presented. We've got a few other issues on the table that have to be addressed. So I, I look, I'm making a recommendation we look at this in January. Let's give us, you know, the holidays are coming up. School's going to be out of session, right, for Thanksgiving, for this Christmas so, break. The only so reason I, think I said December if we're going to do this right, we should push. To, okay. The only reason I said December was because if you wanted to put it on the ballot, you pretty much. That's your next public session, and we, we're taking the we're taking the budget and the warrant on the 19th, I think, of December to the Budget Committee. And so this may or may not, depending on what kind of warrant you're talking about, it may not have fiscal impact. But generally speaking, we try to we try to bear fruit on the whole uh -huh. on the whole warrant with the Budget Committee because in January you're at public hearing time. So if you didn't if you didn't have the debate or the discussion until January, it's going to be sure. tough to put anything on that ballot. So mm -hmm. Uh, simply, if that's the if that's the target, you could simply do an information a uh, non money article as to are you interested in selling the toll farm property for uh, business purposes, or are you interested in keeping the toll farm property as conservation land? That could be a simple warrant article that we could put forward to the public. On the uh, I personally would like to have more than five people make that decision. Right, and that's why it would go on the ballot right. list to get right. information as how the yeah. public feels because the people who voted in the town election in March 
would either vote yay or nay. Could you have a third option as as a partial? Can you have a third option where? Well, yeah, you, you'd have. That's probably what we have to discuss in December because you have to know because you have to have your more analysis in. I think by the first of January. Let me get. I mean, I can get with it, but I think I. I see where you're headed. You want you want to put up. Let's call it a non-binding informational yeah. uh, question, a resolution, if you will, or a or a survey on the ballot to the public, asking them for some guidance. Okay. I'll find out from your clerk what the if it has to be a yes no. Either or, or if you can have, I don't have an experience firsthand. And I'm trying to think back. I don't know that I've ever had an A, B, or C kind of vote on a ballot. Uh, it's normally one of you. Yeah. elections. You put multiple them. names, but I. So you can't have. But it's like not a money article. The money article is more is like firmer than that. But you might be able to do with eight a non binding. I'll ask the clerk to know. Could if you did separate one articles. And then we could draft. Uh, you know, I'll talk to the clerk right away. See if we can get some guidance on what the limits are. Uh, draft some. Some, some, some well, to give you something to look at. We, we've heard from two people, uh, well-intended thoughts, and merits to both, and it would be a difficult decision to make, and that's why I'd like to have more input, more input from the townspeople, personally. Yeah, no, I agree. Mr. Jones. If I might. Um, <clears throat> I know Mary Louise and I are polar opposites on, on this, but I think someone made a suggestion about a, a committee. Uh, I think that Mary Louise and I on a committee could work out some things. We may not be as hard on our polls as it would appear, uh, and it could possibly be worked out, certainly at least in terms of form formulating the proper question for the Warren article, because the formulation of that question is really very critical. Um, I'd certainly be willing to you know try to extend my hand to the other side and see if we couldn't work out some mutual understanding. Okay. Uh, we will continue this item on the on the ballot for the December meeting. We should have more information. We invite you both to come and we'll go from there. Okay. And if and if during that time you decide that you would like to bring us um, a proposal for the Warren article I, it might be good well, yeah. Before they do that, oh, no. yeah. why no. we make we need to make our Warren article, right. and if they oppose our Warren article, then they could make their own if they so. Mary Louise, it. would you like to say one thing? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, could you go to the mic? <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't usually let me steal his microphone. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about value, you're talking about sales value, but what I hope you are focusing on is the value to this community forever and ever, on into the future, with that beautiful small piece of land kept intact in natural form that will benefit this community forever. 44 cents or whatever on your tax rate sounds cute, but that's fleeting. I'm thinking, because I live here, I love here, I'm a resident here, I want to see preserved forever more for this community, that beautiful little piece of land. So think of the value in that context, please. Thank you, Mary Louise. I won't we'll, bug you again till December. <laughs> yeah, well, it'll, it's going to be on our next uh, agenda in December. My suggestion for the committee was to have Mary Louise and I want to work it out with one or two of your board members and maybe a few other members of the community on that committee so that we could actually work it out and bring a suggestion to you in terms of the wording of that Warren article. I, too, live here, Mary Louise. Yeah. I, too, am looking at the long-term impact of what we do on this property. Right. Right. And, and I, I didn't want to get into all of the permutations of what could be, but in, in such a committee that we were talking about earlier, those permutations could be more fully uh, considered. Right. And so that's why I would suggest that it might be uh, the best way to move forward if you're looking to frame the question properly on the warrant. Absolutely. Well, not sure we're going to frame the question until we get yeah, more information. Sure. 
but we should be able to make a decision on that more fully in December. We're kind of operating blindly here. No reason to rush it. We want to do the right thing, okay. not, not the quick thing, right? Yeah. You know, a decision like this shouldn't be a mind bender. It's, it's a pretty flat out proposition. Either you're going to go for short term gratification with money, or you're going to look at the future for a town that was established in 1638 and will be here longer than all of us are gone. Thank you. Of course, I see more nuance than Mary Louise does. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Could Thank build you. a cemetery out there. <laughs> Thank you. Okay.